You know, with three kids, I can tell you, technology can be bittersweet for parents. They can offer education and entertainment, but they can be noisy, tough on the kids' eyes, and they can even lead to security issues. Parenting expert Bethany Braun Silva joining us here this morning to share tips and her picks for some great tech toys here. Thanks for coming back on the show. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too, Eric. I mean, you said it. I mean, especially over the last few years, lots of parents are concerned about the amount of time that their kids are spending in front of the screens. I mean, due to virtual learning, just normal television watching, and of course, those pesky tablets. Yes, absolutely. But yeah, you're like we said, bittersweet. I mean, um, there is some things that they can learn here, uh, but it all depends on how long they're on, right? Can you tell me about the, the screen time and limits? I mean, what do you do at your house? Yeah, so my kids are, I have a nine and a six year old like you, you have the older one too, yep. but for the, the experts recommend for children over than older than five or really that six and up range that about two hours per day under that three to five, it shouldn't be more than one hour and lower than that, no screen time recommended. But you know, that's not to say that, you know, but well, first of all, don't, don't, no screen time for babies. But if your kids are older like ours, I think it's safe to say, to set limits. I don't do screen time during the week with my kids. And if I do, it's really out of a necessity. If I have to, you know, have an important phone call and they just won't, you know, be quiet. Right. Sometimes I'll do this, the tablet for about 10 minutes, but on the weekend, we're much more lax. So I think the secret to tech is making it work for you, making it work for you and your family so that it's not a stressor. It could actually provide you with some peace of mind. Can I ask you for that two hours for someone in that, uh, that has kids in that six to 10 or an above range, does that include the screen time at school they're doing a lot of interactive laptop work still in this in this in the classrooms and then there's also the distance learning so does does that change the amount of time that they should be on depending on what they're doing yeah. at school Unfortunately, yes. I mean, experts like the American Academy of Pediatrics, they really are sort of hard and firm on that two hour rule. But where they are a little bit lax is when you uh, differentiate, differentiate between passive screen time or active screen time. So are the kids like at school learning? They're not just staring mindlessly watching YouTube videos, but are they learning? Are they participating? Are they reading something? Are they maybe engaging with peers in class? And you can actually bring those same kind of tools home when you're talking about tech. And I actually have some items that will do just that that I'd love to share with you. Yeah, give us a look at some th uh, things that can help uh, parents watching right now. Yeah, so like I mentioned, incorporating tech into your life doesn't have to be stress free rather than sort of incentivizing or enticing kids with more screen time why not offer something like a smartwatch for kids they, this moochie's smartwatch is absolutely one of my favorite smartwatches because not only does it have all the bells and whistles that parents need like an sos alarm or safe zone and of course that amazing gps tracking but it also acts like a fitness watch so kids are encouraged to be active they're encouraged to get up and move around and get those you know ten thousand steps much like adults do I like that a lot, um, especially the uh, GPS, just making sure, hey, you know, they got to school on time. If they say they're going to be at some person's house at a certain time, you can make sure that they're there. Uh, my son got a smartwatch uh, for Christmas, and uh, when he's running around the neighborhood, he just say, hey, come on home, time for dinner, right? So there's a lot of convenience when it comes to the smartwatches. And, you know, with the watch and the head being so small on it, you're not going to be sitting and staring at that screen for too long, right? Absolutely. And a lot of these watches don't have Wi-Fi, so they can't search the web. Right. They can't do anything. It's strictly for, you know, fitness and, you know, tracking and GPS, stuff like that. What, what do you have on your left side there? So this is a new device from Amazon. This is called the Amazon Glow. And so it's sort of a new take on video chatting. I mean, I don't know, Eric, how many times you try to FaceTime with relatives or maybe sure. your own kids while you're at work challenge. and they instantly get bored and run off. So this is just a whole new way to video chat that really makes it that active screen time like I was talking about. So of course you have the video call here where you see face to face, but it's actually screen projected on this mat that you can move and interact with. So you can read books, oh, kids can cool. play games and they can even create art all with the person the remote relative or friend let's say awesome. on the other side and all that person needs is you know a tablet and the free amazon glow app so i love this because kids are learning they're getting all that sensory experience that is so important to us and parents and their development so and again they're doing it with a loved one so it's really really great it's almost like being in the same room which you know we can't do too much these days so it's really great a great way to connect and learn all you know under the umbrella of technology that's really neat because you might have a grandparent that wants to 
to you know read a book to the kids and uh, that's come a long way the technology has here so really interesting stuff um, how can they still be um, interactive I like that that one has them uh, being interactive is there any anything out there that uh, could still get the kids to kind of move around but not totally avoid the tech yeah, there's two uh, games or you know toys that I really love. One is called Marbotic. So it's a Montessori-based game where kids use their tablet, sort of in the same way as the Amazon Glow, but they're they're, they're doing it in an interactive way. So the Marbotics comes with wooden letters and numbers. This is really for the smaller or younger kids, I should say. So they're able to learn number and letter recognition, early literacy, all by using that screen, that tablet, but again, in an interactive way. And for the older kids, like, like your, our kids, Eric, that there's, have you ever heard of the, it's called Osmo. So it's really the same thing. You set the iPad up, it projects down to the floor, and it comes with all these really cool pieces to teach kids like STEM and how to code. So again, they're interacting with technology, they're interacting with this and, but they're doing it in a tangible way where they're using objects and they're kind of forced to use their imagination in a broad way. I love that because, uh, look, we have to embrace the technology with our kids. They are going to grow up surrounded by it. Many of them will be doing this for their jobs, Bethany. So uh, we can't Absolutely. turn a blind eye to it. we got to just make sure they understand it, that they're involved in it, but it's not just too much. Uh, Bethany, thanks for the, uh, the great ideas here and for the advice and tips. Where can people learn more about uh, your, your, your advice for them? Yeah, so I'm really easy to find on Instagram at Bethany Bronsilva, and I tend to share lots of parenting tips there. Bethany, I always appreciate it. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Eric.